everyone my name is Ishani Sarkar and it's I'm so happy to meet you guys today even if it's from like across the screen so happy to see you too happy to see you too good to see you I'm uh, AJ I'm a top writer and lyricist in design music uh, since 2006 yeah, yeah. Same, 2006, Nermin Harm Basic, uh, songwriter, producer, piece of music. I'm Jin, um, I'm a producer. Uh, I joined the design team around 10 years ago. Uh, so here we are. So first of all, um, it is an absolute honor to have design music on K-pop map today. So for our viewers who might not know, Design Music is a two-time Latin Grammy-nominated songwriting and production team. Design Music has a total of 40 number ones across various Billboard charts. And in K-pop itself, they've worked with some of the biggest names ever. I mean, we're talking EXO, SHINee, LUNA, BAP, Super Junior, and many, many, many more. So thank you so much for your time and for doing this interview with us. Our you're, pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. So all of you come from widely different musical backgrounds and cultures. So how did all of you come together and when or how did K-pop come into the mix? For me, uh, for us, uh, K-pop uh, came into our lives about uh, 2008 when we were introduced to the to K-pop from our uh, publisher uh, at the time. And um, he showed us some music videos and said, like, I think you guys could really like you know make your mark in this territory and we just started doing our research and by the next year we had our first number one with Gross Generations Vini uh, that you know went number one all over Southeast Asia and uh, ever since we've just been loving every minute of making K-pop. Obviously Jin, you, you, you've known yeah. K-pop all your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, like my case was a little bit different because um, I was a professor um, and then um, when I actually decided to be a um, um, producer, a like full-time music producer, then I got invited to the, the song camp that um, Design and uh, Robin Jensen, the CEO of Design and the uh, Norwegian Authority actually established. Um, and so, which is called the uh, Song Expo. Um, so I went there. Meet, um, meet the family, and then the became the, the rest became the history. It was love at the first sight. Yes, literally. <laughs> I still remember um, the chair uh, that uh, Nermin actually had in the previous studio. It was uh, very comfy. It, it was it was yeah. old, old school hairdressing chair. Yeah, <laughs> a barber chair. Barber chair. Was barber chair. Yeah, barber chair. <laughs> So, um, can you explain the process of writing a K-pop song for those who might not be like familiar with the same? I think writing K-pop, one of the first things I noticed, like there is a language difference. So you have to have more syllables in, in the melody. And that was something that, you know, was brought to our attention quite early. So you have to have focus on that. Also, there are many, many members, more members in one group than you see in like Western pop groups and stuff. There's like can be nine up to 20 people in one group. So the song structure is a little bit different. It used to be a lot more different from Western music, but now like the two are like closing in and inspiring each other, I think more. So the song need, needs more parts so every member in the group can shine. And it also needs to have that twisted melody, I think, like those minors and majors, you know, just that K-pop twist that is just like, it's like umami, it's like hard to explain. Yeah. And do you guys have like a special way of working that's like uniquely designed? Jin is in Korea, so I mean, we are on uh, different, you know, time zones, so sometimes we need to send tracks back and forth. And, and you know, build build a song that way. Uh, I don't know, Jin, Jin, do you have anything to add? And also, I mean, like, when, when, whenever there is, a, I mean, I'm a track guy, so I'm, I'm producing the track and producing the music itself. And then, and obviously, you know, Nermin and uh, Anna actually always sing uh, behind me, like in the back. And then that was like, oh, that sounds great. You know, like we should, we should do that. Obviously. So whenever I think, um, obviously it is in my DNA, whether this is this would work within uh, K-pop or Korean language with a Hangul or not. Uh, mm. So if we actually put the language on top of what what they sing in uh, as a melody, then, you know, 
I can see how they could uh, it could be portrayed in uh, in Korean language, so that uh, we can actually use a term or use a terminology like you know the the, the theme or the keyword, or if that keyword is not really uh, up to the point where we can feel oh this is very like okay this this can be the trend you know this is actually the keyword that we can actually bring in or no that's like you know that's really boring you know like that that's that has been produced like three four years ago i mean we have a same song like same name song like all over again so i mean there is a i think we i can bring a little bit of uh, korean influence there but obviously, uh, we have a different musical background. Uh, we are all musicians. I mean, everyone plays the uh, instruments, uh, and then they have a different background as an artist, musicians, you know, the instrument players. So I think that kind of makes us a little bit um, unique and versatile as a team. And I think maybe I could. Have, I think the way we at least the way I start writing, it's always I'm not thinking K-pop. Uh, because that kind of limits the creativity in a way. So I think starting from the uh, point where you're just creating and then as you go, realizing that, okay, if we make this turn, it's going to fit that project. If you make that turn, it's going to fit that. So, uh, I mean, even, uh, you know, even the Latin song that we did, that we were Grammy nominated, that could have been K-pop song if we just changed the top lines, you know, so so it's like it's it's i think um, i think maybe that's why this has been around for so long that we have managed to kind of reinvent ourselves in a way so because you can't write the same songs that you did 10 years ago no. uh, and, and k-pop has involved and changed so it's kind of that gap between western music and k-pop has been closing and and now it's about i think kind of quality in a way so yeah so you recently worked with Stray Kids for Secret Secret, a song from the new album No Easy, and Queendom, the title song from Red Velvet's new album Queendom. So how would you describe these songs or like introduce these songs to someone who's like not really into K-pop or a new K-pop fan? Uh, well, the Secret Secret is actually was written um, around two years ago. I was requested by the A&R. Uh, to cater a track uh, for specifically made for uh, Stray Kids, which was a little bit mellow, but still having a little bit, you know, like grooves and the rhythm uh, there, so that uh, it can actually portray how uh, Stray, Kid, uh, Stray Kids actually differentiate um, their sounds. And they loved it. So we proceeded the, the top lines, you know, the making melodies and lyrics. So. It took a while with the, you know, it had a long journey with this track, going to the Stockholm, coming back, Stockholm, you know, so then the, when we actually find, uh, finalized uh, the edit, um, Han, uh, and the, uh, Han actually came to my place and he was actually sitting behind over there uh, while I was uh, fixing the, the, the tracks and the production. He was actually writing the lyrics back then and then the, we cut the vocal uh, and then um, I think it took like probably several months to uh, to realize the, the, the recording session with the members. So then the, it was released uh, recently, which was um, actually um, uh, very, um, very good to see because um, because you know, it took a while to actually finalize the song, but still it was actually um, included in the the most uh, successful album that the Straight Kids or JYP actually has released in, the, in their history. So I'm really honored and also really happy to see them uh, successful in that way. Queendom was actually written in the summer of 2019, actually in August of 2019. Uh, we were just girls in the studio, uh, four girls, uh, one girl producer and uh, three top liners. And uh, it was like, it just happened really, really fast because we had such a great uh, a track uh, producer, Mington, who had like gotten a track approved for by um, by uh, Red Velvet's um, A and R, uh, <clears throat> and it was just like I had this word in my notes. I always carry like a, 
like a, a, a document on my computer where I write many ideas in. And I had this word that I've been like sitting on for, for a while, which was like Queen of what is that, you know? And kind of like building a song around that concept. And it was, it's a really bright track and it was a really sunny, great day. And we were just like four girls really feeling the girl power. <laughs> so I ended up writing, writing Queendom that day. I think writing the top lines took, I don't know, less than an hour. And then, you know, we wrote the lyrics that same day and recorded the, the demo the, the same day. And like, it's been so much fun to see the response to that song, you know, from fans all around the world, you know, doing these dance covers and even a dance trip from, from our home, hometown in Norway, Trondheim, has like recorded like a, a one take dance cover in like in the streets of Trondheim, you know, and that just proves that, you know, it's, it's global. K-pop is like, it's, it's a global phenomenon and it's just like, it's growing every day and it's, it's um, it's huge. So you at at like one particular time you must be working on a bunch of songs for a bunch of different artists. So like all of your songs are very different from each other, but they're all incredibly catchy. So how do you like deliver such incredible hits while also integrating uh, different artists' personal musicality into the songs? Like Red Velvet and Stray Kids are like polar opposites in terms of concepts or vibes. So how do yeah. you do that? Like they're both amazing songs and they're both so unique to the groups themselves. So how does that happen? Well, I think like like Jin said, like we, we come from a diverse uh, background when it comes, you know, to musicality and, and it's just like, and we have in the past worked with so many different groups. So as I think it's the, it's, it's the way it's mentally like putting that hat on your head. Like now I'm, really now i'm gonna find the essence of red velvet or now i'm gonna you know like who is exo in this song you know it's it's about like taking changing hats you know from every group you you write for and and like i'm super inspired by by listening to a lot of different genres you know i don't listen to just k-pop or you know western pop or whatever you you want to uh, i listen i try to listen to as many as much diverse music as i possibly can and just love myself to be inspired by different genres you know and so that's my process i think, I think we all are kind of adventure in a way because um whenever we actually have a session like as it within a team we always like look into each other and then say what if we do this? Yeah. So we, we have a lot of what ifs in the, in the session because we are always questioning ourselves, you know, about the, the, the achievement or the ideas or, you know, some of the, the things that, that we've done at that, at that time on that session, you know, just to, in order to process whether this is actually a good thing or not. And sometimes we just go back to the, the where we actually started in the first place. But sometimes yeah. we, we just take it further and then going to the somewhere else and or just you know putting in a crazy transition or whatever you know just to make the the thing uh, unique and the uh, different so i think that the uh, adventure uh mind mindset and perspective i think uh, probably make us a little bit more versatile in the in the in the genre and also musicality uh you said earlier that Han was sitting right behind you when you were like working on Secret Secret and the idols we get to see are always polished and perfect and they're amazing on stage but how was like Stray Kids' Han behind the scenes and how are like in general idols behind the scenes when they're working with you? Um, I think at the time Han was a little bit exhausted um, like uh, physically and also a little bit mentally as well uh, because of all this um, you know like fast paced work and um, the schedules and everything so I think they managed to um, have a two or three days off uh, in order to work on some of the things some of the some of the works that that, that has to uh, has to be done within short amount of time so he was I think feeling really, little bit rushed in a way because my city is a little bit um, uh, outside of the uh, center of Seoul. So, you know, they took a while to get into my place and then the work. But then I think those, um, um, I'm not sure if, if it is a ver vulnerability, but you know, um, he what he wrote on that day was just so heartfelt and so genuine. 
um, which was incredible, actually. You know, like it is a very such a talent that uh, you actually can focus on a uh, random place. You just come in and then the focus on yourself, writing the, those lyrics within like given time, like 20, 30 minutes, or even an hour, write down the whole lyrics, like from the get go, uh, from the scratch to the end. And then the, sing the song as if, you know, you thought about it like many, many years. But yeah. uh, he just did it just perfectly. And then what I actually really surprised is that I thought he was a singer because he sang so beautifully and perfectly. And uh, the, his range was just incredible because he was just lit. He was, he was even higher. I mean, normally it is higher than the uh, average like vocalist. So I said, well, you probably your role is the, the main singer, right? I was asking Han, actually, he was singing right, right beside me. Then he goes, no, I'm a rapper. I'm like, no, you can't be a rapper. <laughs> so that's what happened. And then, um, you know, I um, we had a good talk and then the, it was actually great to uh, catch him again, catch up with him again uh, at the recording session this year. Uh, obviously, he was smiling, and he, you know, I can, I can see that uh, he is really happy. And obviously, he would be happier with the successful release and the result. So I think, you know, like as an artist, as an, um, uh, as a creative minds, you know, we have this ro roller coaster of emotions, and you know, we have to accept that uh, we are vulnerable. We are, you know, sometimes weak, uh, but still. We are strong enough to take a leap and then you know to to come back and that's how i think i think uh han did and um, whenever i listened i mean he was actually on repeat like on the on the loop secret secret song when actually when i actually finished the song because um it was uh, very genuine and it was very special um so it is actually one of the songs that i uh, would uh, i would listen to uh, uh, all over again again so when you're just in the beginning stages of writing a song, like you've just started thinking about it and thinking about the melody and stuff, what are some things that you like primarily focus on right at the beginning? For me, um, being a top liner and a lyricist, I think the concept is really like what stands in the foreground for me. Like if I have a, a, a solid, good concept, that really is a great tool for me to kind of understand where am I going with this song? How do I tell this story? Like, what do I need to say in the verse? What do I need to say in the pre to set up the chorus? And what do I want the chorus to, to what message do I want, want it to have? So finding a solid concept first is like paramount in my approach to, to songwriting, at least, yeah. Oh, I mean, as a producer, I always try to find the signature sound, whether it is a rhythm or bass or riff or it's something that sticks out and something actually people can re uh, relate it to uh, easily. Because like, you know, when you have this type of a digital service with a playlist and then if you don't like, you just change the the song like within a second, right? You just listen, you just give five seconds to listen. And then if you don't like, you just pass like, okay, four, four, you know? Yeah. So as a producer, it is actually a definite challenge. You know, you, you can't be boring. You can't be gen generic or, you know, you have to be upfront. You have to be a little bit cutting edge or you have to be, uh, in, uh, in, you have to intrigue um, uh, like some of the things that, that you don't really like, oh, I mean, it can be irritating. Uh, it can be, you know, something that is really inspiring in a way. So uh, for me, that is actually um, very important uh, to find the right uh, sonic um, to start with. And then the, obviously, you know, it takes a, uh, and then uh, if I, so, you know, those are actually, you know, if you listen to certain things and then you can't, you actually imagine something else based on what you're hearing. But when I hear Anna's or when I hear Nermin's idea with a keyword and theme on top of what I actually imagine how it, it would be, and it is actually completely different sometimes. And we, that actually makes me really, oh, that's really interesting. You know, I, that, that makes me really like chill. So uh, there are so many goosebump moments uh, whenever we work together, because you know, I think those are the the chemistry that uh, the team can actually bring because you, know, you can actually take this uh, further 
out of your range or out of your um, imagination. So, as a team, when you work as a team, have you ever had like completely conflicting opinions on something, like on a song or on yeah, something? Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Mainly>. High temperature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are creative, passionate people. You know, you know, you know, you you fight for your ideas, and but you know, at the end of the day, we we want what's best for the song. You know, and and you know, so there's there's no hard feelings. But of course, the temperature you know gets high sometimes. You know, creative differences. It's it's natural and healthy. I think. What, according to each of you personally, is the charm, the unique charm about K-pop? There's so much. Where do you begin? Um, I think everything, like it's like it's a it's a whole package, you know. It's everything, you know, from fashion to the music videos, and I think you know they're bold, you know, and they they are not, you know, afraid to to reinvent themselves from every you know mini album, and it's like explore. They explore different genres. They're not like stuck in one lane. So it's like they will try a lot of different things and 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 still you know keep their their character and their like specific you know what's what's you know what is itsy what is red velvet that's like a that's like a common denominator but they are not afraid to explore many different genres and sometimes many different genres in one song you know so there's you know that that it's colorful and it's in your face and it's beautiful and yeah um, it's a rainbow of things for me. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 more visual in the way. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. more connected to techno- technology as well. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's it's kind of a little bit different than Western uh, yeah. music, I would say. But uh, Bookie, it's, catchy. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. The universe. Mm-hmm. It's a different universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as a person born and raised in Seoul, and I mean, I'm not sure if I um, can point out the charm of uh, K-pop um, because um, you know it has been changing rapidly and also uh, constantly because um, because I think you know in a way like Nermi mentioned the technology uh, not only be, not only within the the music you know like production instruments and the um, uh, the, the production wise but but also with the the internet globalizations and the, the media social media you know all these um, things are influencing influencing each other so that um, k-pop is in between somewhere so that uh, it is actually interrelated and also it is actually the form of k-pop is always changing still um, the the way I look at the k-pop five years ago is completely different from now and so maybe that's the charm of uh, k-pop you know that um that versatile uh, versatile versatility and also uh, flexibility uh in any forms and uh, in any uh, musicality yeah so like you said like k-pop has been evolving and changing over the years and design music as a whole has been part of that whole change because you've worked with uh the older generation artists such as uh, shiny uh, Shiny, SNSD, and so on, as well as a newer generation of artists like Itzy, Very Very, and Alexa. So, which trend of K-pop or which time of K-pop or generation was your favorite? Ah, uh, <laughs> as a as a songwriter, I'm like, I always, you know, tend to like the things I wrote the last, you know, the the, the latest stuff that that you've done, you know, you're it's like a, you're always on to the next, you know, and to the next, to the next, to the next. So. So uh, I have some nostalgic moments, you know, from uh, from back in the days. For example, TVXQ with "I Wanna Know," and uh, and uh, you know, Girls' Generation. I got a boy and Genie and you know, uh, and, uh, EXO Wolf. Uh, but but I, I I really I like to keep my head in the now and like focus on like what's going on right now and 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 like. I'm excited to see where 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 K-pop will go. Like, I, I wonder where it is five years from now, or or next year, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I personally think will be when we started. It was so undiscovered that it was so exciting because it was new for us and also for the world. Nowadays, for me personally, it feels like everybody is on that wagon. Everybody is writing for, and want to be part of that. That, in the way, becomes a, a, something else then. Because when we first time we went to Korea, 
uh, Japan, you know, and we did all that. It was like so new. And, you know, now everybody's there. And so it's different. It's two different. I think it's two different eras of mm. the same uh, the same thing. So personally, I like that kind of, how can I say that? And, and when we started, it was like new. It, was, it wasn't, we didn't know what we were doing half of the time. So, so now it's the, the different challenges because as Anne said, now you have to like, you can't look back too much. You have to look forward and we have to create Try to the new way, yeah. you know, whatever that way is, we have to be, we feel the pressure of being in forefront of that way, you know, mm -hmm. or we have to be in the back and pushing it. We can't go back 20 years ago and say, hey, you know, even musically that might come back, you know, some songs and some influences from the old, old songs will eventually yeah. you know you can hear things are going in circles yeah so you know you never know but um, it's exciting what's going on now and for me personally it was also i learned a lot when we started doing k-pop in, in the early days i learned i i mean it was it was extremely inspiring mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean to continue the the what uh, Mermin and uh, Anna actually uh, commented. I think you know, like all those songs uh, that uh, we wrote earlier, that it that used to be the last one that at that yeah. time. So that's you know that's what uh, we can actually feel proud of, and then you know that's what we actually uh, got excited the most uh, because um, that was that the 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 thing that uh, we actually feel that yes this is the achievement yes this is the this is a single <laughs> you know, that we have that moment all the time yeah. uh, but then you know obviously when we look back and then the, when we compare those songs uh to what we are actually creating you know that feels a little bit old but still i think it is just the process of um uh of us uh revolving uh revolving as well because um, um evolving as well because um and you know we are also the creative minds that wants to be the you know the forefront of uh, what um what's been uh, uh you know uh, what the mu how the mu music industry is um is changing because because um you know like uh, because you know we want to create uh, and that's why we started the the musician career, uh, the, uh, the songwriter career in the first place. So we want to explore these other possibilities as much as we uh, as much as possible. And that's why uh, those process of uh, the evolve uh, evolving ourselves was possible along the way. I think. So this the next question might sound like. We are asking you to choose between your children, but out of all the K-pop songs that you've written and produced, which one is your like ultimate favorite? <laughs> I think it's hard. Um, um, well, one will always, you know, be be dear to me because of actually how it was created. Uh, created, and it's like um, it's uh, almost, you know, it's nine, eight years since it came out, and it's I got a boy because that day was the last day of a camp and we had written a song and we thought that that song was like oh it, it wasn't it wasn't good enough you know <laughs> it kept coming into the room and we were like oh but it's the last day and we only have until six o'clock in, in the evening and and then we said like to hell with it let's scratch it and start from the beginning like two hours before even you know you have to submit the song and it was just like like something magic happened like it was like the universe said okay if you if you let this go we're going to give you something else and like the song came in the <coughs> song came in in the length the song is like we wrote the song like one take and just recorded everything and it was just a magical moment that that one will i will never forget that session it was because it was so special you know and there's many, but, but but that one is like particular to me because of the stress and then finally getting it, you know, finally everything clicked. So for me, that's that's one I will always remember. It's it's hard to choose, you know, because uh, there are so many. I mean, I think people. like because, you know, the lack of a possibility to travel uh, to uh, Trondheim, uh, that makes me feel, that makes me um, uh, remember 
how he was actually working within the Trondheim studio with the, with the team. Uh, I remember actually um, the NCT Simon Says um, that was actually written in a song expo uh, a few years back. Uh, and then the, that was actually a very special moment because uh, we started from the scratch yeah. after we saw the sort of uh, the lead from the SM Entertainment and let's do this, let's do this. So, uh, me and Ronnie actually working on the bass and the rhythm and then it was just, I think within one and a half, one hour or so. I think we got we got probably everything up, up until the chorus, like everything. So it was very spontaneous and just simultaneous uh, development. Everyone was just like shouting and dancing and then like all the ARs and the publisher just loud knocking our doors and then just dancing around with us. And then we just say, yes, get out, get out. We just have to work. <laughs> just lock the door, lock the door. So um, that's what happened and then the I think after we finishing the song, probably we, we listen 50 times, probably yeah. before we go, go to go back to uh, our place. And yeah, that was actually a really special moment, yeah, if I think about it. Yeah, I, I, I don't have, there's so many, yeah. I don't have a favorite really, I mean, it's almost like, <laughs> but if I had to pick one, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, again, it's hard, but if I had to pick one, I think I, Ah. Yeah, that for me is uh, because that could have been a Western song. Uh -huh. The way we, the, the way it's written, the first verse, three chorus, chorus, it could have been Western song. So that that for me felt really good when we did. But yeah, that was also um, in Seoul. Actually, everyone came down to Seoul when it was possible, and then uh, yeah. it was actually a great moment uh, with that song as well. Yeah. So having worked with so many K-pop idols and soloists and so many artists in general, do you have any interesting or funny behind the scenes stories or episodes that you like would like to share? You were with uh, Amber from uh, FX when you did the uh, yeah, Shake, Shake That, that Brass. Brass. We, that, that song, the idea was Shake That Ass. But obviously. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and actually you were looking for uh, because we had the hook with the brass, but we we're looking for that title, like something, and then we came up with that. I think Amber said brass, shake that brass, which kind of had, you know, ass, brass, you know. So, and that was fun. That was fun session with Jane and Amber. Uh, it was like, it was just fun. It was just that song started actually. I was sitting in a car in Los Angeles, and I had the little hook, and I just sent the memo to Jane. I think a couple hours after, I got the whole track back. No, 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 we we did it in LA actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we but we never wrote that. We didn't. Oh, no, we, it. yeah, we never wrote that. Yeah. So when I actually oh, uh, so went we to the it. LA, yes. We took it yeah. to we took it to, to Seoul. We had that. No, no, we had. How the. So we had that hook and we had some idea where it should go. And then when we had a session with Amber, we played it and then we wrote together. It was it was quite fun. That was yeah. uh, that was actually, but that was what Jim was talking about a couple of questions ago. He said, it's the process. Sometimes we finish it in one hour, two hours, yeah. one day. Sometimes we leave it until the right setting, right Moments. top line comes, you know, because we just, we just wait for that to feel right. And mm. I think with Amber, what she brought to the song, it just felt really right. Then it became a single with it. I think if we wrote it in LA, it would be something else. So like Amber, a lot of idols and artists will always like sometimes actively participate in the process of songwriting or production. So has there ever been an idol or soloist who has especially impressed you? I know that um, they, this pandemic has, has really, you know, not given us the chance to be with the artist in the studio, which is a shame. But I know past that, two years. yeah, past two years. So, um, but I know, like from, for example, Baby Blue Love with uh, with um, Twice. I know one of the girls, and shame on me because I don't remember her name right now. She actually wrote the Korean lyrics to the song, and and I saw from like you know on Twitter and you know on social media that it's a pretty big deal. You know, for the fans that the the one of the members in the group actually are that hands on, and they really praise that. So I I see that that they they can bring so much you know 
identity from the group when they take part in writing the lyrics, for example, you know, and, and it really just makes the song 10 times better but to have that personal touch from the members. So I think that's, you know, that's a very cool thing. Yeah, I mean, to add up with a, with the lyrics, with an artist, uh, with a, yeah, artist and the members. Uh, some of the songs that uh, we actually wrote it together, um, and one song is called um, um, This Life uh, by Key. Uh, it, I actually was, um, uh, it was called uh, That's Life, but um, she, uh, he changed the, the title as in uh, This Life. And then he also wrote um, You and I, um, which was actually uh, the original title was a souvenir. Um, so what he actually uh, uh, did was uh, very, very, um, not the, not the tr translation itself, but he put it, uh, he put the very, uh, he, his own words and also um, his expression into the, the lyrics and the, the contents. Uh, which I really, really enjoyed, and then it is actually it was really heartfelt um, as well. Um, so um, I think um, Key was a uh, very good, um, good at um, interpreting uh, mm. what uh, what the song is about and uh, uh, delivering his emotion with uh, with his words. Sometimes I wish I could speak Korean, just yeah. because mm -hmm. of those songs and just to kind of feel the depth of yeah. what, I mean, some songs, if you say, I can we dance in Korea, that's still, but I think some of the songs like Souvenir and, and some other songs that are like ballads and mm -hmm. things that have lyrical, ly lyrics mean something yeah. more than just like, let's go and dancing, you know? Uh, then those uh, those moments I would, I would like to, yeah. I wish I could speak uh, Korean. Same. Yeah. Mm. So you've mentioned in another interview that you didn't expect Twice's Dance the Night Away to be as successful as it was. So are there any other songs that you have that like pleasantly surprised you because they were like even more successful than you thought they would be or like even the other way around? I, I mean, I think, I think, I think we never expected Genie to become that no, huge. that's true. And <laughs> I mean, there's a yeah. couple of songs that I really uh, not I mean, you, you expect them to kind of do well, but not to be there now 15 years, maybe no. 20, 17 years. Yeah. It's still, you know, a great song that, you, you know, so uh, that's, that, that's, you know. It was overwhelming. You, like You can listen to that song today and it sounds good. So, of course, production can be refreshed, but yeah. this is something still universal and time timeless. Yeah. And, uh, and people uh, seem to like it. So, that, but I never, yeah, never believe that song would do, be, be that song. Yeah. So besides K-pop, you've worked with J-pop artists like Arashi and Taiwanese artists like Jo Lin Tsai, Latin artists like Ricky Martin and British artists like Nathan Sykes. You've pretty much worked with artists from all across the globe. So when you're approaching a project, do you focus on the geographical market or is your uh, like focus more on creating a universal sound regardless of the language the song is in? Yeah, I think I think for me it's about creating something that because the world is really small. You know, you can you can you, you, we tend to say K-pop, J-pop, but if you have a great song, great idea, mm -hmm. I mean, people like it. People yeah. tend to like people. I mean, you can fool people once, but not twice. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows if something is good, and everybody knows if something is just good, but not it's not gonna last. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are songs that there are hype today but not in 10 years so there are songs mm. that can be become be bigger hits as the time goes so they you know they can start slow but then in 10 years they, they are still there and they have still played on radio and you know they just stand uh, uh, the, the time so so i think uh, yeah only one time have i ever heard this song is great but it's not k-pop enough yeah. You know, only one time I've heard it, and then, then you, you know, we had to go back and, and tweak some some parts of the track, and then you know, kind of cater to that act specific, project. that project specific sound, and 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 you know, uh, to make it like seem uh, sound more familiar to you know to the fans' ears. You know, I think and uh, and. And we had we did that tweak, and then you know they took the song. So so I mean sometimes you need to do those those small tweaks. 
as Jin said as well, he said we're creating the track from for him for his uh, when he's doing that. He's creating the universe that our artist can fit into, mm. and then you can do top lines, you know, on top of that, and you can feel free to create it within those fra the frame. The framework, yeah. You know, you can't if you look if you're working with somebody from UK, you wouldn't do something that fits Excel. You know, you wouldn't. Mm. It would just be this this yeah. this match mismatch so i think we understand now after being in this industry for 20 years and more than 20 years is that we need to put those different hats and when we enter the room we we have to like do the research who we working for why and what are we trying to achieve i think that's the that's kind of uh, but everything starts with a simple idea and then that idea involves and sometimes it's like out of our hands you know you, you think Oh, this is for that, and then suddenly we got a phone call from NR saying, "No, it's actually, you know, somebody else picked picked it." So, it, I think it's really hard. Sometimes, I mean, most of the times we think we know, but we, I, I don't think we know. It's like it's more the feeling, the gut feeling or intuition that leads you. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah. So, do you have any K-pop artists or solo artists or even producers that you would like to work with in the future? Loads. Jin Choi. Jin. <laughs> I don't want to be I, in the same room. I would, I would with my like mother. <laughs> to. I would like to work with him in the yeah, same room. Yeah. In the same room, preferably. Like yeah. you know, we're missing that you know human you know connection right now. You know, everything happens through a computer screen. But um, jokes aside, of course, I would love to have a single with BTS. I would be lying if I said I didn't. Uh, same goes for Blackpink, but also what is exciting is to break a totally new artist that you know that you can kind of develop the sound for that nobody's heard of and you know make them explode and really like you know have a breakout success. I think that that's equally you know exciting if you know what I mean. So, so yeah. we'll see what the future holds. Are there any genres or styles that you would like to try that you haven't like really explored before? <laughs> we haven't done folk, Korean folk music. No. I mean, I would like to do that one day, but uh, it's definitely not. I think happen. you did. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay. I, uh, it's hard. I mean, I don't know. I was, I, yeah, I was actually thinking like there's, there's, there's very far between that I get to do a great ballad, you know, a good, solid, timeless, evergreen ballad. You know, and, and it's hard because, you know, you know, it's it's very stripped down, it's very naked, you're very exposed, you know, your melodies are really like up front and center, but you know, to write a great <laughs> timeless ballad in K pop would be amazing. So the songs that you've composed like the songs that you've written and produced have had incredible achievements to their name starting from all kills and Korean charts to topping the Billboard charts. So how does it feel when one of your, your K-pop hits is at the top of the Billboard chart? It feels like competing with yourself. <laughs> no, I think it, 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 it's... Very, we, we're very humble, but at least I'm very humble, you can see. <laughs> no, <laughs> I feel grateful, to be honest, because I know there's so many songwriters and producers all around the world wanting to get that cut you know mm -hmm. and being one of six songs on an ep or one in you know on, or on an album or you know being lucky enough to have a single that that's topping the charge it's like there's no other feeling like then i feel like i've accomplished something and, and i'm i'm super grateful and it's an exhilarating feeling you know to see you know reaction videos on YouTube and see all the fans singing the song, you know, it's nothing like it. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, as, as a Korean producer, I mean, like, even, I would say 10 years ago, um, you know, like, the K-pop itself wasn't that, um, wasn't the global phenomen phenomenon uh, that uh, people are actually facing or uh, considering right now. Um, so, Still back then, you know, I wanted to break through as a producer in the Western world, you know, working with the, you know, like uh, the power artists out there in the US and UK. I mean, we, we did uh, in, a, in a certain uh, capacity, and but, st um, but still, um, right now, looking at the K pop and then um, having focus in the K pop market as a producer. Uh, working with so many artists and uh, labels and having uh, achieving this um, 
monumental results makes me feeling very, very proud actually um, to uh, recall all the memories and the history that, that we, uh, we made as a team together. Um, so it is very grateful. Um, very, very, I'm very grateful and, um, and um, but still we are, we are hungry. So we want to, <laughs> we want to continue to do it more. I think we are grateful, of course, but also I think we have put down the hours. You know, it's like uh, without we, we have worked our asses off. I mean, to be where we are, it didn't come didn't come for free, and uh, you know, it's been a roller coaster of emotionally and and uh, sometimes uh, hard on. Uh, you know, it's hard to stay the team as we are for 20 years or 10 years. You know, there will be some. You know, <laughs> there'll be some uh, things that we have, like uh, challenges, always. But I think the love, the passion and everything always uh, overcomes those things. And then we on to another wave of creativity. And then, so I think that's what I'm proud of and, and thankful. But I'm also very uh, aware of that we did it. Nobody did it for us. And that's why I, I might seem not humble, but I'm humble. But I'm also, I'm also very proud and you know, it's this is like extreme sports. I yeah. mean, as Anne said, there are millions of people trying to and have that cut, and then you know, uh, we have done something right so far, and I think uh, we will be around for some time. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. It's a clear, it sounds like a cliche, but it's actually true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to goals for the future, what's next for design music? just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I just want to, you know, keep writing songs and getting more cuts, getting more singles and, and, and you know, get better at my craft because as a songwriter, you never, you know, you know, you're never finished learning, you know, there's always, you know, things to be explored and you can always, you know, work on your craft more and, you know, write better songs. And, and, and so I just want to, you know, keep evolving myself as a songwriter. In, all kinds of genres, you know, all kinds of markets. I, I want to, I don't want to stop here. I want to conquer. I want to have a, I want to have a Grammy. <laughs> Not only nomination. <laughs> Not only nomination, but I want to actually hold it in my hand. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, I think that's on the bucket list for any producer songwriter, you know, to to, <laughs> to have that in your hand. So, so yeah, I'm not going to be shy about it. I, I, that's my dream, yeah. I think that's very near in the future. Wow. <laughs> Thank, you. I'm, I'm, Thank you. I'm personally, I'm thinking uh, because of pandemic that we are in the middle of, I think it's hard to uh, uh, plan anything. Of course. So, so I think uh, for us it's like every day, every week, we literally start weeks with, we have a, we have a weekly meeting on Mondays and personally i'm like okay i'm focusing on that week and then the next week and then yeah and whatever that next week brings then that's gonna happen so uh, it's very hard it's very hard i think it's uh, because of pandemic it's almost the world we, we, everything has changed so much i mean we have probably 20 songs that, that have been cut that are not being being released yeah because yet because of pandemic so everything is delayed yeah. so everything is delayed so it's kind of the it's, it's like um, I think what we can do is just come show up and to turn up the in the studio and do what we do. Yeah. And then leave rest to Kana and Robin and yeah. all the people that are helping us to achieve the goals. Well, at least the next, my next goal is just to travel. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That would be nice. I keep seeing these memories popping up on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> and Snapchat, like what, where we were, like, you know, three years ago together, you know. Back in the days. It feels like, uh, it feels like different life. Yeah, <laughs> I miss it so much. Uh, yeah. I think I posted yesterday, like I miss traveling the world and writing music with my friends, which is, you know. So Design Music collaborated with the CEO of SM Entertainment, Lee Suman, on Echo Music Rights. Now, did each of you have any specific purpose in mind that you wanted to see fulfilled through this project? I think, um, it was um, the the subject was brought up uh, because um, uh, there are so many possibilities with uh, the copyright and the publishing. Um, not only with the, not only from the label side, but also from the, the publishing side. So I think there was a reason why 
there was um, uh, the discussion um, and also the uh, the roadmap for this uh, publishing uh, company uh, called uh, Echo Music Rights. So um, we've been actually uh, on the road with um, with a team and everyone around the Echo Music Rights uh, for a while uh, now. Uh, and then becoming a forefront of uh, K-pop uh, market as a producer and songwriters, which are really, um, uh, I feel very, um, uh, very grateful and also uh, proud of because um, uh, along the way, uh, design music on were only uh, the writers who were actually signed and then uh, signed to and also co-founded the uh, Echo Music Rise in the first place. But then along the way, there are so many newcomers, and then obviously there are the actually forefront uh, songwriters and producers like Moonshine and Sunshine and Cassiopeia and Ellen Burke, Bobby Lewis, and everyone, uh, Ka Ka Karen Paul, uh, everyone um, around the team actually made a successful, uh, made us successful as a team uh, too. Um, so uh, I think it was a very, very, um, I mean, I guess uh, I, I, I feel very emotional when I actually think about all what happened because of uh, may, maybe not not only because of uh, co uh, the COVID-19, but also because of, uh, you know, all this uh, restriction around our daily routine and life and you know, makes makes uh, makes us uh, wonder about um, what happened last in the last few years and then just look back and then uh, just make that as a sort of a memory and also the foundation to for us actually to uh, step up and then you know take a leap to the another chapter in the level. So yeah, it's been very um, very uh, successful, productive, and um, uh, beneficial for everyone involved, and also uh, great uh, uh, after all. But I think uh, on a human level, I think hopefully we can learn and and appreciate even more what we had. Mm -hmm. And because this pandemic has any pandemic, it will go over and we will, you know, life will go back to as normal as it can be, but we will travel again and, and the world will, you know, uh, uh, stay and, and remain. But I think hopefully we can learn from it and, 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 and appreciate what we had even more. That's, I think that's going to happen. I think we, as, as Jean was saying in, in uh, another interview that we did, he said it was, Sometimes you're tired of traveling and I think, I used to be like, oh, do I have to go? And, but now <laughs> it's like, can yeah. Can we go? <laughs> yeah, can we go? And yeah. I think, I think it's, I think some, some of us will learn uh, and maybe appreciate even more what we had and, and yeah. There's nothing like being in the same yeah. room together creating. It's, it, nothing is, is like it. it it's magical. Because at least for this side, I think our relationship between Robin, Jean, me and Ronnie. Ronnie is not here, he's the also producer and songwriter in, in this side. Um, uh, I think that I think if we were only friends, this wouldn't work. But there's more, there's there's something more and it's hard to tell what it is. Regardless, we can fight uh, and we can fight and we disagree on, on the song and but we always kind of find a way to respect each other and and go back to what, what's really important. I think that's the strength of this music as a team. A lot of people will break up. I mean, me and Anna, we've had discussions and fights because of the top line, but then it's not personal because she's my sister and I love her to bits, but it, it's about creating that thing and pushing each other yeah. to achieve it. And I think that from the beginning, you know, people would say, you guys are crazy. But if we weren't like that, we wouldn't be here. I think, I think, I literally think we wouldn't be here. Like, uh, like uh, that honesty that sometimes hurts my feelings. You know, if Anne is honest with me or, or the opposite, or if, I, if I'm honest or, or if Genius is, doesn't like the, or not feeling the top line. You know, it, it can hurt your feelings, but at the end it's like, it's not about me. It's not about Genius. It's not about, it's, it's about creating something that it's bigger than us. So according to you, do you think there's a difference between a good album and a successful album or a good song and a successful song? And if there is, like, does that affect your creative decisions as well? Sometimes 
you know a good song it's it's very it's like subjective you know sometimes you know i write songs that are i call them passion songs that i think are amazing but that doesn't always resonate in an a and r's you know ears or my publishers like they won't even you know uh, they won't even say that maybe well this doesn't where, where should i send this one i was like it's the greatest song ever I love it so much. I was like, but where should, where, who will cut it, you know? And then you're just like, okay, <laughs> take your hat off and then, you know, be more maybe cynical about it, more analytical about it and, 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 and say like, okay, these, these artists are looking for, for these specific songs. These are the songs I have to write to make it a successful song. And when you do that, you know, you have, I think you you are pinpointing more, you know, where who who is this for, and uh, what's the message, and what do you want to say, and you know, then I think you are more successful in getting placements instead of just like only writing from your own passions. Like it's like it's understanding it and like within boundaries, being able to be creative and satisfy yourself as well, but but being a more you business minded that you have a purpose you need, you need to like write a song that will fit that act for example i don't know if that answers your question but that's you know. i mean what jim, jim used to say the catchiness and the hook i think that's that's basically today in the world of TikTok, you know if you don't have something that within five seconds true it's taking your it can be a ballad if it doesn't have that hook within five to ten seconds in on the piano or or string or something in the, in the track people are not going to listen i mean it can be the best song in the world if it's wrongly produced it will skip it it's not going to be a biggest hit in the world mm -hmm. so i think the the, the 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 balance between production melody and artist and then who is releasing it what platform they're doing what kind of promotion it all plays in if the song is because you know if, if the song is going to be a have a chance of becoming a hit hit song today so i think i think it's almost like building the house you know you you start from the bottom and then you build and then you come almost to the finish and then something is wrong and then everything falls apart so i think it's um nobody knows you can just uh, hope that you know you, yeah everything everything yeah. Yeah. And reception towards the song um, is um, like um, animation. It's very subjective. Um, so when you when you think that um, you know when you attach attach yourself to the song like deeply uh, emotionally, and then you think that wow, this is just like yeah. this is powerful. This is just so so good. <laughs> like you know, and then the, when when the artist actually recorded the song, when you actually listen to the master before the release, and then they feel like yes, this is it. You know, this is it's the the magic. And then um, when it's released, and sometimes you know people, uh, the fans uh, are relating uh, themselves to the song like deeply, like I did uh, in the first place when I actually made the song. Then uh, I can feel that yeah, that was a good song, but that is also a successful song because my emotion and my um, the I mean not the attitude, but it was just the core foundation towards the song is actually transmitted and transferred uh, with the medium of a song to the to the others. Like you know, even if they are living in the other side of the planet. They still, you know, shedding the tears and crying. They are saying, you know, like tweeting that uh, this is a great song ever, and that makes us like feeling, wow, you know, I made it, I made it, I made it, you know, I made that uh, good song, I made that successful song for uh, for others. So I think it is a very subjective um, uh, categorization when it comes to if you actually define the difference between the good song or the successful song. But I think there are. There is a fine line you know between those and then that you can actually have both at the same time so what advice would you have for aspiring songwriters k-pop songwriters or producers who want to be who dream of being as successful as you find the team i think yeah. find the people that uh, can be honest with you and help you on the way and who can uh, add something to what you already what you have so differences our differences of four was creating 
makes us this uh, music that has been successful. Me, if you take me out of this, or Anne, or Jin, or Ronnie, it's going to be something else. It might be even more successful, but it's definitely going to be something else. So I think five, uh, that would be my like five people, and then work 12 hours a day for 10 years, and then you might get there. Like uh, that's basically it. I mean, and even now, I think with, with all technology, people are creating the, the gap. I mean, when we started, there was people didn't know. There was a little bit like hesitance. Now, everybody just realizes that everything is global. You have to make a product that can go across the like borders, and 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 and, and it's just the economy. Also, question of economy. You know, where, where you can make money to survive and to be a musician or songwriter you know you and professional songwriters you know, they go where the where people pay them you know so so but that would be my 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 advice find find a team create a team around you and build on that yeah and if you can't find a team find if you can be so lucky call us to have a mentor <laughs> to have a mentor call us. <laughs> It's, it's easy. I think like the, the most important thing, like when you're starting out uh, as a songwriter, is just get sincere uh, feedback. I mean, call us if you're better than Jin. We might swap you for Jin. You know, <laughs> just young, younger version of Jin or Aunt, me and myself. Yeah. Getting, old, yeah. getting old, right? <laughs> so this is kind of you know. I mean, Jin. Sorry, man. <laughs> Well, also, I think it is also um, like probably every pro um, every profession is the same same thing. But I think um, it is um, it is the patience uh, under the constant battle because um, you are actually making a battle with uh, everyone and also with yourself because um, from the from the start you probably think that oh that number one that you know that cut with this artist you know that would change my life and then you know. Ah, oh, you know that would be my dream. But what if you actually did it? And then what's you gonna do after that? Because you have to do it again. You know that's actually just the start of yeah. many, 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 many obstacles that uh, you have to actually overcome. So in that matter, uh, you know you have to be uh, persistent and you have to be patient with yourself because you have to allow yourself to have uh, enough time to grow and also to get discipline. Uh, with the experiences and then with the networks and the, with the, all these battles that, that you actually have uh, with the team or with the people around you or sometimes, you know, you would have a betrayal, you know, with a, a person that uh, you actually feel really attached to. So all these life lessons actually makes you stronger as a, as a, as a songwriter and also as a creator. So um, I think it just... Uh, you have to look at the, the big picture, bigger picture than only just one goal, because yeah. uh, you are worth of that the bigger goal and you are worth of that the bigger picture. So I think, um, um, and I think, you know, that, that, was, uh, that was exactly what uh, Nermin actually said. Uh, around the team, you can actually nurture yourself with a team and people actually around you nurture yourself mentally and emotionally and also musically so that uh, i think that's why we actually have uh, grown up to this point as a as a successful producer and uh, songwriters since you all are such pioneers of k-pop music if you guys were to form a k-pop group what name would it be and what positions would each of you have like vocalist <laughs> dancer rapper visual <laughs> I'll be the spicy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love to be the rapper, though. I love rapping. She Please can rap. let me be the rapper. Ronnie, Ronnie would be like guitar hero. He would play. <laughs> Jin would probably do some uh, beatboxing. Or I don't know. Like. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? What do you want to be, Jin? What do you want to be? Ah, <sighs> well. I think that's a great idea. We, 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 should, <laughs> we should actually we should actually do this. Maybe in a year, you know, suddenly we do this interview. We got a couple of songs out there, you know. Who knows? Yeah. But oh, we have yeah. to find the name. We can call ourselves yeah. Kimchi or something. I, don't I, I, I want to eat. I want to be the face, but um, I guess I need a little bit of uh, surgeries and stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But um, no, I I would um I I would uh, I would uh, be the the. 
the mouse clicker like uh, I, I am now uh, as a, uh, the producer, the, the master behind. <laughs> cool. What should we call ourselves? I actually love the idea. Let's do like cartoon, Disa music cartoons. That would be actually great. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. I actually <laughs> love the idea. I actually love the idea. <laughs> All right. Of course. So it was amazing talking to you guys. It was so enlightening and I had such an amazing time. I hope you guys had a good time as well. Likewise. Thank, you, Thank, Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.